What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and today we're going to be spending a real day in the life with a Razer Phone 2. Now if you've never seen one of my real day in the life videos, you're pretty much going to be spending the day with me and the phone as we test out things like the performance, gaming, those new cameras and of course the battery life. But spoiler alert, the battery life that you'll see throughout this day doesn't tell the whole story so be sure to stay tuned for the wrap up at the end to get a better picture. But let's see how it did in the real world. All right, guys, it's real day in the lifetime. Uh, we are starting off, of course, at 100%. And this time, it is 925, folks. Pretty early today for me, anyway. Uh, we're having a pretty early start. Um, but this is the audio and video quality that you can come to expect. One thing I can see, though, is that it's a bit overexposed. But it's doing the correct thing. It's just I'm, I'm black, so it's kind of hard. <laughs> But we got a lot of stuff to do today, guys. So let's get started. All right, guys. So now I am in the studio. Uh, just to give you guys a battery update, it's 1033 and we're at 87% battery. Now I was using the phone for a bit, answering some emails. I played a couple of games in my Uber. And uh, just to let you guys know where we stand with screen on time, it's not gonna be super accurate today because for some reason the phone randomly rebooted twice on me. So that kind of reset the whole screen on time. But before it rebooted, I was, I'm sure it was probably like about 10 minutes of usage. So I'd say about 34 minutes of usage. Now, there are some things that we have to factor in here. I am using the logo. So it is breathing, um, actually it's not breathing, I think it's cycling through the different colors. And we also have it at 120 hertz. I feel like for the Razer Phone 2, you're gonna want those settings on. So that's what we're dealing with today. We're gonna see how much that impacts the battery. Okay guys, so we actually shot a massive tech unboxing just now, uh, but I had to jump on the phone really quickly because we released a video while I was doing it. So now I have to respond to some comments. And I've been typing up emails since earlier this morning. I gotta say, the feel in the hand not bad and typing on it with one hand even though it is a bigger phone it's just fine that is also because it does have a smaller display this is a 5.7 inch display compared to all of these six inch displays that we're seeing nowadays this one just feels very comfortable to type on since it's a small display but it still looks very good we'll talk about the display more later uh, but I'm going to finish up what I'm doing here in terms of responding to some comments and then it's gonna be some gaming guys gotta do some more gaming on this thing. So right now I am in an Uber headed to the city. I got a meeting to go to. So this is the perfect time to pull this out, play a couple of games and uh, see how it does. And in case you guys were wondering what games I've been playing lately, Dragalia Lost has all of my attention right now. And what's nice is that this thing is optimized for a 120 Hertz refresh rate. So it actually looks really, really smooth when playing on this phone. But this is a really fun game, guys. It has a great soundtrack. Uh, it's updated to work with this phone. So it's, I've been really enjoying it. So we're actually in the tunnel right now. So now's the perfect time to show you guys what this game looks like. And I don't think it translates well over video, but man, that 120 Hertz refresh rate, it looks so good. Okay guys, so I got where I needed to go. And I will say after playing on this for a little while, uh, it does get a little bit warm, uh, that you know new system that they've got to cool their phones. If you're expecting that to completely eliminate the uh, heat, that's not gonna happen. Definitely still some heat, but it isn't hot or anything. Definitely still fine to hold in the hand with no problem. And I didn't see any slowdowns in terms of my gaming, so. So far, it's not an issue, but we got a lot more gaming to do. All right, guys, so I finished my meeting. Now we're gonna head over to B&H, but we gotta give you guys a quick battery update. And it is currently 251, and we've got 68% left. And to give you guys an idea of screen on time, so an hour and 21 minutes. Now, any other phone, I would really get on them about this kind of battery life, but I've been playing a lot of games and there are, man, New York. But there are a couple of factors to keep into consideration, like this logo, uh, the 120 hertz display, of course. I think in my wrap up, I'll let you guys know just how much these little touches add in terms of battery drainage. But as of today, we're going all out and it's having a severe hit. And guys, this wouldn't be a real day in the life if I did not play some Sonic Forces try to get my race on. Dang, I missed all, every time I play this game, it makes me look bad. But yeah, guys, I do wish that this thing 
took advantage of the 120 hertz display because it looks so good when you're playing games with that refresh rate. Honestly, that's like, I'm so spoiled by a Dragalia Lost right now. I won the race. That means this phone is the best phone in the world. You just gotta go buy it. <laughs> but all jokes aside though, uh, this phone is like super comfortable to play games on. Now, I would be freaking out if I were using another phone because of this glass back, being outdoors where there's concrete, possibility of dropping it, that all freaks me out with no case. But like I said, the phone is actually pretty comfortable to use in the hand. Uh, I think because of these hard edges, it's just kind of easy to grasp. So that's something that gives me a little bit more confidence when I'm outside. Uh, I don't really have to worry about it slipping out my hand and falling, even though this glass back is very slippery. Like if we had this thing just laying on a table, it would probably slide around uh, because it is kind of slippery in the back, but these edges, they make a big difference. All right guys, so playing some good old Pokemon Go. My boy Malcolm over here. You know, he's been playing on the iPhone for a while and have you you haven't seen one, a 120 hertz uh, game. I haven't actually. So I want you to, oh, pip up. Try and catch mine and see the difference. Oh, <laughs> that's something. It's different, right? So the difference between a 120 hertz display versus the regular display that everyone else uses it's massive, guys. You notice it as soon as you gotta like spin it really fast. And you let the world know you can't play this game well. <laughs> Don't like that. <laughs> okay, you caught it. So that, that works. That works. Dude, but this feels completely different. Like, this is like a whole different experience. <laughs> yeah, it's night and day, man. It's night and day. And we're in BH, guys. This place is just amazing. Being surrounded by all kinds of tech. You got laptops. You got all other tech over here. You got cameras. It just never ends, guys. So we are in the photography section. Got my boy Malcolm over here. We are going to try and get a picture of him over here. So let's see. I'm gonna just do a regular shot. It looks very green. I mean, this is definitely usable. A little soft. Portrait mode is a tighter shot. This is kind of bad, to be honest. Yeah, look how soft this is in comparison. It looks like everything is just kind of blurry. But when you go over here, you get a lot more detail with the regular photo. Maybe we'll try that one outside. All right, guys, so we left B&H. I got my man Damon over here. He stopped me, watches the videos. So I figured why not try out the front-facing camera, take a selfie with him, so we can kind of get an idea of what that quality is like. Let's we'll see what we got. Now, this is a properly exposed photo. Some parts are a little bright, but for us brothers, it came out pretty clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's not so bad. Yeah, can't complain about the quality. It looks pretty good. So now that we're outside in some sunlight, we're gonna continue taking some pictures. We got some flowers up there with a little street sign, so we got some color going on. Let's take a picture of this. Get one, boom. And I'm also gonna do HDR, boom. So the normal shot actually looks pretty good. Let me see down here in the lower ends. A little dark, but I can still see detail. Now let's see the HDR. Oh, snap. Now our HDR looks way better here. You can see way more detail in the plant than you can over here. It's a lot darker. Now this isn't a bad camera or anything. I definitely think it gets the job done. But when you start comparing it to other flagships, especially just coming off the Pixel 3 XL, you do see some imperfections. HDR. No HDR. Oh, you blink. All right, so we just took a couple of pictures of Malcolm too. I did HDR and regular. Regular shot looks okay. Uh, the harsh sun is on his face, so you gotta be a little forgiving for that. But when it comes to the actual HDR shot, I don't know, they just really, really brightened his face. I prefer the regular shot over the HDR shot, to be honest. HDR definitely seems to be one of those settings that you don't want on all the time. If a situation calls for it, like the flowers that I took a picture of right there, sure, but it's not a setting that you just leave on. All right, guys, I think I've been gaming way too much. We have 22% battery left. Malcolm has came and made me play Pokemon Go all day. Kill the battery life. So let's see if we can give you guys a screen on time update. So we got 22% left and we've been using the phone for two hours and I say about 45 minutes. So almost three hours and the phone's almost dead. Of course, we were gaming on it all day. So in terms of performance with gaming, it's been able to hold up. Even though the phone did get a little bit warm, I didn't see any drop frames or it slowed down at all. So no lag or anything like that. So that means the cooling must be working. Uh, but now we gotta get some food. Okay guys, so I just had like the scariest experience ever. You guys know the gadget backpack. I have it right here. As you can see, I'm alone now. I actually headed back to Jersey with my guys, uh, but I forgot my backpack at the restaurant. So I had to run back to the city 
and grab my backpack in the restaurant. Thankfully, it was still there. But by now, the Razer phone has lost a substantial amount of battery. It is at 8%, but it is 8.42 uh, p.m. So it did last the whole day. So I can't really complain about that. And I did a lot of gaming, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm actually still impressed that it is still up and running. So let's see what I actually got. So I got three hours, three straight up hours of screen on time. And I put this thing through its paces today. I did a ton, a ton of gaming, uh, use GPS to even get to the actual restaurant. Um, you guys saw it, a lot of stuff. All right guys, so I am finally back home. I had about 6% when I put this on the charger and I had it on here for about 30 minutes and I have exactly 56%. So even with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, 30 minutes was able to get 2,000 milliamp hours worth of juice in here. So uh, yeah, pretty good fast charging. So you guys can get a little idea of the speakers. I got some Thor Ragnarok over here. Check this out. Nice stereo speakers. And it, honestly, it just sounds so, so good. So you guys can hear it for yourselves. This thing is so loud and it honestly performs as well as you'd want it to. Of course, with these giant grills, you definitely want this to sound good. Ari actually made some complaints over on Twitter about these speakers, but hey, they do a really good job. And that was pretty much our day. Now we did end up with three hours of screen on time, but I will say that is with the highest consumption with the Chroma logo in the back. And of course the phone being at 120 Hertz at all times. Now I did some more testing of course. And when I brought the settings down, I saw a drastic difference in battery life. Bring the display to a 90 Hertz refresh rate and the medium setting for the Chroma logo got me six hours of battery life, which is double what we saw during that day. Now this is where Razer offers something really cool with the Cortex app. Not only can you find games that are tailored to work well with the Razer phone, but you also have access to your entire library so you can jump into your games right from the app. But what makes this app special is the game booster section. And what's great about the game booster section is that even though I had the phone running at like medium settings, I could go inside and fine tune how I want the phone to run with each and every game that I had. So if there's a game that can take advantage of the 120 Hertz refresh rate, I can set it to that. And if the game didn't support it, I could bring down that setting. I could even fine tune the clock speed of the processor as well as the resolution. So you get a lot of control here for each and every game. And I really like that because you can have some games running full throttle. And if a game didn't require all that, maybe something like Candy Crush, you can bring down the setting so that it's not using up too much energy. Now we talked about performance and gaming and this thing definitely excels at that. But where it also is really strong is of course with regular media consumption. It's got a great looking screen with powerful speakers. So watching content is a joy. Although I will say I wish the display were brighter. It is a bit on the dim side, so I do wish it had a little bit more brightness to it just so that we could enjoy it quite a bit more. Now, I think I walked away feeling like the Razer phone felt pretty nice in the hand. Texting on it was not a problem. Doing whatever I needed to do wasn't an issue. It's not a very big screen. It's 5.7 inches. I think that's a pretty decent sized screen. Uh, but one thing I will say, uh, some people will have some discomfort with the back because it is a glass back. But at least with that glass back, you do get wireless charging. Uh, Razer actually introduced a Chroma wireless charger. The thing is awesome. I like the way it looks. I love the chroma effects. I'm a big RGB fan, so this thing looks great to me. I know not everybody is, but I'm glad they made it. Now, when it comes to the camera, there's definitely improvements compared to last year. Still not a top ranking camera for me, but it does have better dynamic range than last year. And it also lacked a bit of sharpness in my opinion. Uh, portrait mode is not something I would suggest using. It just honestly didn't look that good to me. But overall, the camera is improved. And I noticed in my original Razer phone real day in the life, a lot of people said they didn't care about the camera. So if you gamer phone lovers are still with that sentiment, then this is not gonna be a big deal, only an improvement. So there's that. But overall guys, if you're big on mobile gaming and content consumption, this is the right phone for you. Uh, the Chroma logo in the back, I think looks awesome. I love the fact that you can customize it and change the colors, kind of match what you're wearing. I like having that flexibility. I think it adds a really nice touch to this phone. How many of you out there are mobile gamers who take their gaming seriously? I personally like what I saw with the gaming on it and I was very happy with my experience. But at $800, let me know what you guys think. I think if you're a big gamer, it's definitely worth looking into. But that about wraps it up for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be the cool guy or girl that gives this video a thumbs up. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace.